it's no secret. What happens around the world can impact us here, even in Nebraska, farmers and ranchers. Let's take a look at those markets and kind of analyze what's going on. Here's NTV's Grow co-host Steve White. Two things that we're really looking at. Uh, we're becoming more and more a global marketplace. Uh, we were talking to them about uh, what impact uh, world production in South America is having, and also the big importance of the Chinese soybean demand, and especially on the meal side and oil side. And so we're really trying to help them understand how important it is to keep an eye on all the global factors out there, especially as we go into this next crop year. Uh, there's a lot of factors, potentially what impact La Nina could have on South America. And in addition, also from a few of the kind of policy changes that are happening in China, we have to keep focused on that. So trying to keep them abreast of that today. Certainly though, this is, this is a challenging year. Yeah, it is. And we're trying to also talk to them how to tweak their marketing plan. One of the things that we're really helping them focus on is how to take some emotion out of that plan. One of the ways that we're really trying to introduce to them is to use some more technical indicators. And we talked to them about one today in regard to the stochastic, which is, think of it as kind of like your speedometer in your car. It tells you how fast the uh, market's really going. And we're trying to help them to incorporate that into their plan so they can reduce some of their emotion, help them to make better decisions in these kind of these challenging times we're having right now. Well, you mentioned emotions because it is emotional. It is your livelihood. You're living out here on the farm 24-7, 365, but sometimes is it important to kind of take a step back and look, as you said today, not only at the fundamentals, but also at some of the technical things in the market. It is, and I think the other thing about it that we really want them to keep in mind is that, you know what, there's, there's enough grain out there to kind of keep a top on the market for now, but there's not so much out there that we can't see better prices down the road yet. If we have a weather problem in some of the major producing areas, it can bounce back. So this is a time for us to just make sure we, we stay focused, there'll be opportunities down the road, and we just have to continue to improve upon the ways that we're making our decisions. You know, you mentioned at the onset, but just how global the market is, that is so important to keep in mind uh, these days, and, and soybeans especially, right? Yeah, soybeans especially, and there's really the two things on that. You know, the South American production is a big one that, that becomes a global factor. There's a few things going on down there with that Brazilian real that we're going to have to watch closely because that really kept a lot of corn acres in production this year. One of the items that we're watching, though, is to see whether or not that if the real moves at all, we could see some more of those acres come from the corn side back to beans. You know, we're at the kind of the time of year where both corn and beans, we're thinking about harvest and what prices might look at, uh, any general sense of trends that you're seeing in the market? Yeah, a couple of the big things to look at right now is you really want to make sure you're focusing on and keeping your ear to the ground in regard to yields. The jury's still out on beans. It looks like we're going to have a pretty good corn crop, but the thing we're watching on that is that because of how really warm it's been. We're a little concerned that we may be getting a progression of the crop a little too fast, which means we may have a little bit uh, lower test weights, maybe a little bit lower yield than what we were thinking, but you know, we're watching that closely at this time. Uh, big thing as we're going into harvest though, I, I think we're finding a base here. You know, if I had sales to make or something, you know, I wouldn't be panic selling here. I, I think there'll be some better opportunities down the road. We've got your grow forecast just ahead. Don't go anywhere. My name is Cooper Dixon. I'm a fifth generation farmer. In 2015, there was an estimated total head of cattle of 6,150,000.